are you in my closet? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. You have any uh, New Year's resolutions? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna read all the books I own and not buy any new books and just, just get through everything that I have on my shelf and... No. Uh, no, those are great plans. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna ruin them. Okay. I mean, over a book a month, like my, my mustache and I, it's back in case you didn't notice. Um, we've been working really hard. New releases that have been coming out in January this year, this new year. Wow. I don't know how people are gonna pick between our selections. But listen, you're gonna you're gonna really have to sell them to me this time because I'm not gonna take just any book that you show me. The first one is Age of Vice, Family Saga examining the socio-political environments of India and the family. That looks gorgeous, I'll take it. We also have Lunar Love. Wait, with the book of the month subscription box, I can skip. I can skip months that maybe I don't want that book. An Enemies to Lovers rom-com in which we follow our protagonist. So I think maybe I would like- It was always a matchmaker never the match not to skip i would like very much not to skip i know this isn't your first box but if you have friends or family they can use your code emmy to get their first box for 9.99 i mean what am i supposed to do books get delivered directly to my door i have no willpower yeah well enjoy reading maybe i'll see you and your mustache again next month what is going on in your world bienvenue or welcome back to my channel uh, if you can hear Calcifer, who is my cat, screaming outside, it's because I've locked him out of this room for now, and he's so upset about it. Because today's video, did I even say it? My name's Emma, if you're new here. Hi. Um, today I'm going to be tier ranking every single piece of classic literature that I read in 2022. Uh, I read quite a few pieces of classic lit. Uh, in 2022, which feels great, and I have my tier ranking system. This is something I've been doing for like three years in a row, although the first year I did it, I just did like my worst classic to my favorite classic, but I just find tier ranking a little bit more inventive and fun, so as per usual, I've created a whole new tier system for this year, so we're just gonna go through it. Hopefully this can be maybe an indication of some classics that you want to pick up or maybe the ones that you don't want to pick up and i'm just going to be telling you my thoughts so without further ado let me show you my tier list okay so at the very top we have smash this tier is the god tier it's reserved for the books that i would smash you get the metaphor if this book was a person maybe the metaphor doesn't check out i don't know but smash it just means that they were a hit they were more than a hit they knocked it out of the park i would give everything and anything to these books and they just made it to the top 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 of any single list possible i adore these books i forever want to have these books so smash uh, as you can see we'll just balance it out with the last tier which is pass this is the this is the last tier these are the books that i just straight up didn't enjoy i wish i could have just passed swiped left maybe never read them or even if i had read them and you know they were important in some way shape or form i had no enjoyment from them and i probably wouldn't recommend them to anyone we have a good balance the next category from the top is they're a 10 but these are books that i loved but they just didn't make it to smash there was something about them. There was something about them, something that held me back. They were still amazing because they're a 10. Next up we have, just in the middle of the road, we have Killian Murphy looking unimpressed. Uh, I think this is a good representation because this is the face that I made the whole time I was reading books like these. Books where they didn't really bring up any feelings, they're just straight in the middle. They weren't awful, uh, but I had that face the whole time I was reading them because it didn't do that much for me. Well, I wish I had that face. Killian Murphy is so gorgeous. Next up, we have... Huh? These are the books that I read and I was like question mark reading this i was like why why did you write this why did you feel compelled to write this um i made this category with definitely a few of these specific books in mind books that i'm just like you didn't need to write this books that i didn't fully get or maybe i'm like the author didn't fully get why are you going on these tangents right now why are you going on these rants just books that i'm kind of like who asked and then the second last category is just take the pen away you know stop writing you're done you're done. Maybe these were books that went on for far too long. A spoiler, but Charles Dickens, I'm looking at you. Uh, maybe these were books where I was just like, you know what, you could have wrapped this up long, long time ago and you just need to stop. Maybe the book was good at one point, but you've waxed on enough 
that um, you need to wax off, you know, Mr. Miyagi. Those are my tears. Those are my explanations. Let's begin. These are in no particular order. All right, so first of all, the first one, I'm just going to pick one from the top. I see Volpone or The Fox by Ben Johnson. This is a play that um, I had to read for my Renaissance literature course. It is about, um, I almost said treasure hunters. No, it's about fortune hunters. It's about uh, little vulture people who hang around people they think are going to die. They try to get into their good graces so that they will then be put in the will. And when that person dies, they will get a bunch of money. But we follow Volpone, who is one of these people, but he's pretending he's dying. And so he's kind of using all of these vultures around him to give him favors, to do really nice things for him, but in reality, he's not actually dying. Volpone is going to go into the Killian Murphy category of just like... This play is supposed to be a comedy. It's supposed to be pretty funny. Uh, I just did not enjoy it at all. The only thing I really liked about this was the animalistic symbolism and like people as animals. I don't love reading plays in the first place, so Volpone or The Fox. Um, just not, just not my thing. We have the yellow wallpaper. I feel like this one is calling to me. This is a reread. This is a reread for me because I've read this so many times. I first read this in uh, grade 12 in my last year of high school. Uh, I can tell you right now, the yellow wallpaper is going straight to smash, like absolutely smash this thing, like smash it to high heaven. I love the yellow wallpaper. It is a short story about this woman who uh, her husband, John, takes her to this place to relax. She calls them ancestral halls, but she also refers to it as like a haunted house. You could read it through the lens of like, maybe she's at an asylum. We don't really know where she is, um, but she is locked in her room, which is very significantly the nursery of the house. and it's all about how women's creativity is stifled the whole time she's writing her story everyone around her is being like please don't write it's gonna make you more sick um, and it's about the yellow wallpaper that is in the room where she is kept uh, so good every single time I read this I find something new masterpiece masterpiece masterful smash okay we're gonna be having a lot of tolstoy a lot a lot of tolstoy in this video because in 2022 i read i don't even know how many tolstoy works this one is the cossacks the cossacks was one of the stories that i did enjoy the most it's about this man from i believe he's from saint petersburg i think he's from saint petersburg and he goes to stay with the cossacks during uh the circassian war and he starts to really fall in love with the people there their culture their way of living but he feels such a huge divide um, between himself and the people who live there because they're from very different societies so it's all about him trying to fit in and it's also of course a war story um it kind of bridges the gap between these two because the cossacks was one of the tolstoy short stories that i enjoyed more than the other ones i read but i think at the end of the day it's probably gonna have to go into the killian murphy category because there were some really beautiful lines about mountains next up i'm seeing a movable feast by ernest hemingway this book came out of nowhere smacked me in the face i don't know where i want to put it this was my first hemingway i read my first hemingway in 2022 and i'm currently reading a farewell to arms i don't know i'm just kind of falling in love with him in a way that i've never fallen in love with an author because there's something very just like addictive and readable it's not that i get so much like enjoyment and world transforming quotes or ideas or anything like that from hemingway it's just like this like addictive i want to inject it into my veins kind of writing just don't want to put down his books when i pick them up there's something very interesting about that i think a movable feast which is his nonfiction memoir about his time living in paris i flew through this like i flew through it because i loved it so much I think a movable feast is gonna have to go into smash. I do, I do. I think there's something, this quality about it that I just love. I think a movable feast is smash, I do. I'm happy with that. Um, okay, next up I am seeing A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. I love this. This is about Lucy Honeychurch. She goes to Italy and she's like, oh my gosh, Italy is very different from like my middle to upper class English society where I'm very cloistered and like people don't say what they want to say and everything is just so restrained and she meets this guy in Italy named George and um, it is kind of a love story but it's also about 
the repression that English society forces on a lot of people, especially their women. So I'm going to put a room with a view in there a 10. Uh, how would I complete the sentence? There are 10, but sometimes they're a tad dull and Lucy does kind of regurgitate everything that the men around her tell her. So still a very solid book, really enjoyed it. Next up we have, <laughs> next up we have Family Happiness by Leo Tolstoy. Um, he admitted himself in his older years that he was embarrassed to have written this and me too. I mean, he kind of wrote it with, I think, his wife in mind, which like just makes it worse. Um, it's about this woman and her relationship with this older man. They eventually get married, but they're very different because like she kind of wants to discover society, wants to discover herself, and he's very much the country man, wants to be in solitude away from the city, and he starts to accuse his wife of all of these things, and then it becomes this just like disgusting monologue of the wife being like, you know what? All I have left is family happiness and our children. You just kind of follow her being broken down to this husk who will make children and make her husband happy and then she's happy about it. And at the end of the day, I was just like, huh? Kind of who asked. The reason why it doesn't go into pass is because I can't lie. There were some really, really beautiful lines in this, really great writing, and I did really feel like I knew these two people as much as I hated a lot of the things that they were saying and doing. So Tolstoy, very talented, but more often than not, the things that Tolstoy's saying is, it's just, this is my face. I have the cat face of... <gasps> and then there were none by Agatha Christie. Um, I'm gonna just blow this up for a second because I did watch this movie. Uh, it's a mini series. Uh, the B is this BBC, I think? Yeah. Um, wow. I did a whole video trying to solve this mystery, so you can watch that if you want, but this is now my favorite Agatha Christie novel so far, I think, and definitely my favorite Agatha Christie dramatization or, you know, film. I also now have the absolute biggest crush on this man right here. Was I ever interested in watching Poldark? No. Am I interested now? Maybe. We're talking about the book here though, and I think, and then there were none. It is a smash. It is a smash for me, honestly, but it was so great. I love the idea of this because like they're all invited to this island and they all start kind of dropping one by one. It's very psychological. I loved it. I think the film did a great job. Favorite Agatha Christie book? We have The Nutcracker by E.T. Hoffman smash to Philip Lombard. I forget the actor's name. I'm so sorry. Um, Smash. I love the Nutcracker. What can I say? I think there's a lot of cool things to analyze in the Nutcracker. There's big evil mice. What's not to love? What's not to love? Drosselmeyer, Smash. Oh no. Okay, then we have my first Mark Twain book. I read The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn this year. Mark Twain is just so not for me. It's going right to pass, our first pass. Um, I did not like this book. I dreaded picking it up every single time I had to return to it. I did not get any enjoyment out of this book. It was a chore for me to read. I had to read this for my American Lit class. And um, yeah, for some reason I knew I wasn't going to enjoy this, but I really hoped I would anyway. And then I did not end up enjoying it. And it's just, oh my God. Mark Twain is just so not for me. I do not enjoy his writing whatsoever. So um, I'm happy I finally read Huckleberry Finn, but I will probably never go near Mark Twain again. Honestly, I'm sorry. Okay, next up we have Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys. Wow, this was amazing. This was a really challenging book to read, I think, um, which was exciting. This is a prequel to Jane Eyre, so we follow Bertha um, and Rochester. We follow them meeting. It's set in Jamaica, principally, I believe, and so good. Her writing is so interesting. So White Sargasso Sea is going to go into there a 10 because I did feel like there was something for me that just didn't propel it all the way up to one of my favorite classics of all time. I think I just wanted a bit a bit more from it. A lot of it is very insubstantial to me. Like a lot of it you really have to go behind the scenes yourself. There's a lot of like reader work that has to be done here, which I love. That's not the reason it's going in there a 10, but they're a 10, but I wanted to go a little bit further in its examination, I think, of society and colonialism and stuff. So that is White Sargasso Sea. Okay, next up we have what the hell does this even say? Oh, A Prisoner in the Caucasus. Mm, this one is going and take the pen away because there wasn't anything like bad about it, but it's just a story that at the end I was kind of like, 
okay. It's about these two men who get taken prisoner uh, in the Caucasus again, I believe, during the Circassian War, and it's about them being held prisoner, but at the end I was kind of like, what was the point? Maybe just take the pen away and do something else with it, you know? Next up, we have No Longer Human by Osamu Dazai. Uh, this was very depressing. Man, this is very depressing. This is about a man who doesn't consider himself part of the human race. Uh, he's desensitized to a lot. He's very removed, very isolated. Um, I thought this would have more of a profound impact on me than it did, so it's gonna have to go here because I liked it, but it didn't really have a huge effect on me. So it has to go into like, it's a solid classic. It's one of Japan's most famous classics, I guess. In terms of like, what did it do for me? It didn't do very much. I found it a little bit dry, honestly. And um, yeah, I thought for a book about someone who doesn't consider himself part of the human race, I was gonna have more of a interest in it. On the other side though, we have Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. Smash. Smash? There are 10, but Smash? Ooh, I don't know. I think it has to go into Smash. I just have that feeling in my gut. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed this. This is about a Konkwo who lives in his village with his family. He has multiple wives. He has a ton of children. And he's really revered as like one of the greatest warriors. But one day he kills one of the, his clansmen. He's exiled and it is eventually about um, colonialism missionaries coming to Africa, to Nigeria, to his village, and what happens there. Yeah, I want to do- I want to read this again. I think there's so much in there to get at. There's a lot to examine, a lot to analyze. I can just picture this whole book inside my mind, and, and I, st I feel like I have it all inside of me, um, which is really cool, so. Next up, we have Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens. Honestly, this was kind of Dickens' redemption to me. I was kind of ready to go on a little break from Dickens, like just have a little- have a little breakup, you know, have a couple months breakup before getting back to his work because I've been reading him chronologically and um, none of his stuff was really doing it for me until Dombey and Son. This changed the game, honestly. Um, so this is going to have to go into their a 10, but they're 930 pages long. I'm not going to put it in Take the Pen Away because I loved Dombey and Son, but man, did not need to be 930 pages long. This is about a brother and sister. They're very proud, neglectful, disdainful father and everything that goes on in their lives and everyone connected to them. I think Dickens grew so much as a writer somehow between this book and Martin Chuzzlewit. Okay, next up we have The Gitanjali by Takur. This is a piece of poetry. Uh, devotional poetry, which is not my thing. So many people love the Gitanjali. Uh, it's so beloved and I'm just, oh, it's gonna have to go into this category because like I can see why people love it so much, but devotional poetry is just so not up my alley that I was unfortunately destined to just find it okay. Next up we have, oh, another Dickens. We have the old curiosity shop. Oh, I thought I was gonna like this. Um, I think curiosity shops are so cool. I don't think he excelled in this novel. I really don't. This is about Nell. I didn't like Nell. I didn't like her grandpa. I think Nell's grandpa is like one of the most frightening Dickens characters I've encountered. There was one scene in here with her grandpa who's addicted to gambling that really frightened me. Like it genuinely frightened me. But I think for the old curiosity shop, I'm gonna maybe just put it in, huh? Because I think there were a lot of cool ideas, but like what he chose to do with them, this book was all over the place. This book was so much walking, so much goddamn walking. And also it just, can Dickens just leave orphans alone for a hot minute? Have a child character who isn't the literal embodiment of an angel with no parents. Leave the orphans alone for a little bit, buddy. Like just move on to something else. It doesn't go into Take the Pen Away because the old curiosity shop is I think one of Dickens' shorter novels, <laughs> thankfully. Okay, what is this? Then we have the posthumous memoirs of Bras Cubas. Ooh. Ooh, this is so good. I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I think this has to go into Smash. Smash. I would probably smash Barascubas, I can't lie. He's charming. Yeah, this is cool. This did so much. This did so much for literature. Uh, I cannot wait to read more from this author and Smash. Smash. 
all the way smash. I think it's 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 great. It's perfect. It's so self-aware. It's him reflecting on his life uh, now that he's dead. Oh, we have another Agatha Christie. We have Crooked House, which I did try to solve again in a video this year. <laughs> Does it ever go well? I think Crooked House, ooh, 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 it's definitely not a smash because there are some things in here I didn't love. It's not my favorite mystery. It's about a family whose like patriarch dies and he leaves all of this money behind, um, but someone believes that he was poisoned. I think it's gonna have to go into there a 10. Next up, we have Daisy Miller by Henry James. Um, I actually like this more than I was expecting to because this is about a young American woman who comes to Europe. It's about the clash of new and old money. She meets this man named Winterborn who is very uptight, um, very, very close to a lot of people in a room with a view actually. But um, this is so different. A Turn, Turn of the Screw is one of my favorite classics of all time. Daisy Miller is very different, like I said. Huge societal study. It's one of those books that like... It's not the best to enjoy unless you're gonna like, I don't know, talk about it in your English class, um, honestly. So I wouldn't recommend you really necessarily pick up this book, but I think, I actually did really like it. I think he did some clever things in here. I think it's still gonna have to go into there a 10. You know, it does go into the smash category. It's 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Yes, favorite, my favorite book of all time. I mean, obviously it has to be here. It, it, it is the standard for me. Like that book is the standard it is the standard it is the bar um the bar is 100 years of solitude that's all i need to say okay next up we have what is this is this another tolstoy it is what is this oh it's the raid another war story the raid is going to go once again into the i got nothing out of this um it is discussing like people trying to be heroes and stuff but i just don't think at this point in his i just don't think at this point in his career his stories were like that great honestly. Um, so dead face the whole time I was reading this. My face was the face of death. Okay, next up we have Poems Tonight by Rilke. This is upsetting because he's my favorite poet, but it's gonna have to go into there a 10. It doesn't, it doesn't get the full smash because I didn't really connect with a lot of these and I'm really disappointed in that. Um, for me, this is my least favorite Rilke book. That's very, very surprising, but a lot of these just did not click with me for whatever reason, but I still love them so much because they're Rilke. I love everything he does, but um, not as much as some of his other works. Okay, next up we have Discourse on the Method by Descartes. Oh my good god. <laughs> what is this man saying? I wanted to get more into philosophy this year and some other things, so I picked up Discourse on the Method, which is very, I guess, influential, important, but man, it has to go into this category because what the hell was this man talking about? He starts talking about some weird ass shit. He has a whole section devoted to how animals are actually machines and they have no thoughts or feelings. They can't feel pain, all of this stuff. Let me fetch it. Ooh, there's a candle. Oh, God. Whoa! I have fashioned a method by which, it seems to me, I have a way of adding progressively to my knowledge and raising it by degrees to the highest point that the limitations of my mind and the short span of life allotted to me will permit it to reach. Have you now? He tries to prove the existence of God. Another section talks about the very famous I think, therefore I am, which I've never understood really nor agreed with, and his proof of God, I was just kind of like... Huh? Next up, we have some ecstatic poetry by Mirabai. I did like this. Um, I, the whole time I was reading this, I was kind of like, go off. A lot of it was very sensual, very cool. Um, I'm gonna put it in there at 10, but for me, it didn't make it all the way up to, you know, my favorite poetry. It just doesn't, it doesn't stack up to the things that really affect me the most, um, because again, a lot of this can be seen as devotional, and devotional and aesthetic poetry is just uh, once again, not really my thing. Okay, then we have Polikushka. This is one of the Tolstoy short stories that I read this year that was more affecting because this is about a peasant who um, is an alcoholic. He's trying to better himself, better his life. He's also a serf. And so he agrees to do this like big errand for his mistress, the mistress of the property, but it 
it, it kind of ends in tragedy. So I'm gonna, mm, I don't know. At the end of the day, I think I'm gonna put it in, in here because um, some of this was very affecting and Tolstoy was very concerned with like serfdom and later in life freeing the serfs, but um, a lot of things examined in Polykushka, I don't think they pushed those views in maybe the right way all the time. I didn't love it, love it, love it, so it just has to go into you know, that, because that was my face the whole time reading it. Next up, we have The Blind Owl by Hedaya. Oh, smash. Smash all the way. Um, this was a good year for, this was a good year for classics. I think last year's was a bit more dicey, but wow. One of my faves now, extremely, extremely disturbing, extremely disturbing. Um, and if it's disturbing, it's gonna go and smash. Don't psychoanalyze me. Okay, next up, we have Paradise Lost by John Milton straight smash uh epic poem epic poem of adam and eve and god and satan and chef's kiss we have the pearl by john steinbeck uh this was just all right this was all right i did like his writing style um but it is gonna have to go into the third category because it wasn't a 10 it definitely wasn't a smash it was just kind of a solid piece of work killian murphy's face is not frowning he's not upset he's just he just is and that's kind of what this category is to me you know they exist they're there do i have any sort of huge reaction to them no we have another hemingway the sun also rises mm. This is gonna go into, they're a 10, but all they do is drink. I'm gonna grab, we're almost done here. What is this? The Sevastopol sketches. Tolstoy's not eliciting anything from me. I'm, I'm sorry, they get so repetitive because he talks about the same thing all the time. He gets very preachy. Next up, we have Chess. Oh, Chess, or The Royal Game, or Chess Story by Stefan Zweig, if I'm saying that right. Smash, smash. Anything, a, a, a book about chess? A book about chess. It's like a war book about chess. A psychological study of war and chess. Smash. Smash. That is so my thing. It was fantastic. Very short book. Highly recommend. Next up, we have... Let's just go from the top. We have this one that I like didn't really mean to put in here because this is a pretty recent release, but it's Derrida. I freaking love Derrida. This is the animal that therefore I am. I used so much of this piece of theory in my Frankenstein essay, which is probably the thing that I'm most proud of doing in my degree, but I talked a lot about witnessing uh, and the animal that therefore I am provided a lot of context research theory about like what do you do when an animal looks at you like what does that what is that one of the coolest things i've read it talks so much about animal animal cruelty animal lives animal witnessing Rilke's book of hours this was a reread for me smash wow it was a good year look at this this was a great year um one of my favorite Rilke works honestly and i got to read this at the beginning of the year love what is this oh god it's barnaby rudge it's time to take the pen away it is time to take the pen away, Dickens. Um, it's time to take the pen away. You've written too much. You've written too much. You need to be stopped. Take the pen away is is the category for Charles Dickens. I mean, I get it. I understand. I wouldn't want someone to take my pen away if, like, with every word I wrote, I was getting paid more. But geez, Louise, Barnaby Rudge, like, seriously, so many useless passages, so many filler passages. And, like, you can argue that with, like, probably all of his novels, but Barnaby Rudge, I felt it the most acutely because I wasn't even really enjoying the story anyway it's about the gordon riots uh riot, riots against catholics that were going on in england and it's about mob mentality it discusses a lot of really cool things this one i most appreciated for teaching me about history but um didn't love it so then we have mrs dalloway by virginia wolf this has to go into their a 10 but it just wasn't my thing at all um it wasn't it wasn't my thing i think it's extremely impressive the message and everything that it talks about is top tier just wasn't a book that i really enjoyed the experience of reading it's a very stream of consciousness it's about one woman going about her day but all the things that one day in the life of like a woman staying at home planning a party like what goes on in her mind because it's getting back at the idea that like maybe her life is useless it doesn't amount to much that's one that i would write about but i didn't enjoy actually the experience of reading frankenstein smash smash all the way one of my favorite classics the last classic finally is how much land does a man need by leo tolstoy um this one actually is gonna go into there a 10 
but I wanted more. This is a very short story about a man who uh, is just greedy for having more land and he makes a deal with the devil to acquire as much land as possible. And then the final book that just isn't on here because it was a DNF is Martin Chuzzlewit by Dickens, which obviously goes into pass. Um, but it was a DNF, so I didn't finish it. Here it is, tier ranking system. That looks pretty good. Like, that looks really pretty good. I read a ton of great books this year. Um, these are all fantastic. I feel like maybe I'm forgetting a few classics somewhere along the way, but I want to say thank you so much for watching. Definitely let me know what your fave classic of the year was. So there's my list. I hope you have a great freaking day, and I will see you in my next video. Ciao, guys.